All right, we're gonna get a club, then a spade, then we have to, oh, this is part A and part B, right? One where we put the card back, one where we don't. So this is where, this would be called with replacement. Uh, so what's the, the probability that we get a club and, which we read, then a spade? What's the probability that we get a club? Four. Times the probability that we get a spade. So one in four times, we put it back, right? So it's like a brand new deck of cards. So it's also one fourth. One eighth. One sixteenth. One sixteenth. One in sixteen is the probability that we'll get that. Okay. So B would be without replacement, where we keep that that cup that club out, and then we draw a second card that we have to be a spade. So probability to get a club, then spade. Probability that you get a club. Here's the different part. Probability that you get a spade, given that you already picked a club. There's a lot to say right there. When we say spade given club, we mean get a spade given that you've already picked a club out. Well, what's the probability that you get a club? One fourth, nothing, no big surprise there. It's the same as the previous one. What's the probability that you get a spade given that you'll get a club first? 13 spades. 51. And then there's 51 cards left. You can choose from any of the remaining cards. That's 51. There are still 13 clubs or spades in there. We didn't take any out the first, the first draw. So we get 13 over 200. <coughs> Probabilities, because it's possible for this card to be both things, both what things? Well, this is what's the probability of a king or a diamond? <coughs> well, if it was just a two unrelated things that couldn't possibly overlap, we would just take the probability that you get a king plus the probability that you get a diamond. That would be if they were disjoint. Uh, but then there is overlap there, right? There's king, and there's diamonds. 
What's the overlap here? The king, king. Just one card, right? This one thing is in, is in the overlap, but there is overlap. There, a card that is both of these things. The probability really that you get the king of diamonds, we know that that is the overlap. So what's the probability that you get a king? Four in the key two. Four in the key two. Four. One out of 13 is simplified down to. What's the probability that you get a diamond? One out of 13. No. 13 out of 13. Oh, I thought you said king. Okay, how's it? What's the probability of getting that key? One, one out of two. <laughs> Sorry. It's all right. Uh, so you got 12 out of 52 plus 4, so 16 out of 52. 8 out of 26. 4 out of 13. Anything else? Probability that you get a six plus probability that you get a black. Then we're going to take away that that or those cards that are both uh, six and black. So what's the probability we get a six? One thirteen or four fifty-two. Okay, four out of fifty-two will simplify down to one out of thirteen. Plus twenty-six. There are twenty-six cards out of the fifty-two cards minus. Two. Two. There are two. There's six oh. of clubs, six of spades. Out of 52. Oh, yeah. uh, 26, 24, 30, minus 2, 28. Out of 52. Uh, Probability you'll get a black one. Three out of ten. Of even? Five out of ten. Of black and even. Two of ten. No. Equals uh, eight of six. And four of five. What? No. Three out of five. Yeah, I was like. take this description and we can count them. You can see it, right? So uh, I'll count this even one, 
and this even one which also happens to be black, this even one which also happens to be black, but I also count this black one because that's, that's okay too, and then this even one and this even one. But by doing that, you are avoiding the double counting because you wouldn't be tempted to, as you just look through these, count these two again because they're both. Uh, but when you add up the probabilities, you have to subtract the two that you naturally would have in this one and in this one. Okay. Next. If I ever go too fast, just tell me and definitely something we can figure out. It's actually something that we're going to talk about today that leads into what we're doing today, but <coughs> how would we figure out the probability that we're going to flip 10 heads in a row? One half multiplied 10 times. One half multiplied 10 times. There's a, a heads, 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 I don't know how many. That is 5, 9, 10. If we're going to get 10 in a row, we're going to have 0.5 here and here. We're going to multiply it by itself 10 times. How, how can we do that quickly? 0.5 squared. Or 0.5 to the 10th. Okay. 0.5 squared. Yeah, no, I didn't do that. So, 0.5 to the 10th. Or, you know, you solve it. Well, solving is the wrong order. But evaluate, you can evaluate it. Right, as a fraction, 1 half to the 10th would be 1 over 1024 if you know your powers of 2. <coughs> I think we all know our powers of 2, right? Or if you did 0.5 to the 10th, <coughs> you could test more. You do 1 divided by 1024, you'll get uh, 0.0009785, I think it turned out to be. Do we round up? Yeah. Wait, 977. Seven. Seven. Nine, seven, seven. Well, round up to 7. Why? Because it was 6-5. Six, 6 and a 5. It was 5-6. It was definitely 5-6. What? 9, 7, 6-5. Six, 6. He's rounding the... Oh, rounding oh, yeah. the 6 up... Or the, yeah, the 6 up to a yeah. 7. Yeah, okay. All right. I thought you'd go a little more place. That's all right. Still didn't catch me. Still always. Two cards, not putting them back. Where is my pen? Uh, what to, drawing two cards, not putting them back. What is the probability to draw a six and a face card? And this word and means then. Right? Because two things are actually happening. Two cards are getting picked. Whereas in the previous section, and didn't mean two things were getting picked, it meant one card or one thing had two things that were so, true. Yeah. I think I did it wrong. So you would, the probability, before you take any cards out, it would just be 4 out of 52 to draw 6. 4 sixes out of 52, but yeah. But then you have to take into account if you take them out, so then it'd be 3, or no, then it'd be 4 out of... 12. There's 12 face cards. What? 12 face cards. Never mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I knew that. I was 12 face cards out of 51 cards that are left. That's the uh, without replacement. Okay, that's what I was thinking. That's what we call a conditional probability. That's what we call uh, this part. This is the, p the probability of, say, a face card given that you already picked a six. That's what that vertical line means, given. Um, what about the probability, just for fun, probability of a face card than another face card? What's the probability without of the first face card? Or without. 12 out of 52 times 12 out of 52. 11 out of 11. 11 out of 11. Yeah, out of 51. Because we did pick a base card already. So it reduces the total number of cards and the number of successes. Okay. Any questions about those four questions? Question about a question? Light one, light one, light one. I'm going to solve it. Oh, well, fine. Because I know I did it. This will be uh, 4 over 2 is 3, 13, and so 12 out of 13 times 51. Uh, 
51 is divisible by 3, isn't it? So this is divided by 51 by 3, what do we get? 51 is not. 70. Okay. Just because I noticed this is, this is some, you can simplify it, simplifiable. Four times one over thirteen times seventeen, which I don't know what that is. Two hundred seventeen. Okay. Got questions? Speak up, whatever. Uh, Bored. You do that little thing that's hey. like Brit. Yeah. I'm ready. Are you ready? Sorry. Okay. Wait, actually, no. Let me bring up the okay. I'm gonna write a thing down. There's this formula we're going to use, and I'm just going to give it to you up front. Normally, I, well, not normally, always, I just hate giving formulas and just plugging numbers in. But if you want, go ahead and give it up front, and then we'll break it down and figure out what it's made out of and why it is what it is. Okay? I'm going to use all this math jargon. So, for uh, K, no, N trials of a binary experiment, Okay, let's break that down real quick. We'll come back to it. What is n? N. A number. It's a number. It's a number. N trials. What's a trial? How about what's an experiment? Uh, many trials are go into Let's go with an experiment. What's an experiment? Like a test. Yeah, like. We've, we've talked about lots of different experiments. What's, it, what's an example of a, a simple kind of experiment we do with probability? Flip a coin. coin's an experiment. Draw a card's an experiment. Like these are all experiments, okay? A binary experiment, what does bi tell you about this experiment? Two. Two. Something about two. Two would be, there's only two possibilities. You succeed or you fail. So flipping a coin's an easy one, heads or tails. Rolling a die could be a different one as long as you only want one thing to come up, like a six or a five. Pulling a card out of a deck of cards, as long as all you want to get is a uh, spade, or all you want to get is the king of hearts, or so you got to be really specific. If you get that thing, you win. If you don't, you lose. Succeed, fail, win, lose. Kind of the same thing. A trial is just trying that experiment once. Right? I flip a coin once, that's a trial. Flip a coin twice, that's two trials. Flip a coin three times, that's three trials. Okay? So for n trials of binary experiment, um, the probability of K successes, we call it wins, but the book's going to call it successes, it'll never call it wins, is N C K times P to the K times Q to the N minus K. Right, I'm going to break that all down We gotta qualify what P and K are. P is the probability that K happens. And Q is just the probability that K doesn't happen. So that would be all of the 100% or one in decimal minus probability of K. How much sense does that make already out of five? Two. Two, Two out of five cents? Okay, that's fair. Sounds good. We're on good footing. If you're still <coughs> that, I'm just going to put the question that I want to start with over here to the side. We're going to set up a binary experiment that has n trials, and we're interested in k successes. Uh, let's let's start simple. The experiment will be the experiment will be uh, roll. Success. We got to define success. Um, a three. The number three is a success. Okay. We're gonna do this thing uh, for ten. Ten trials. It's this experiment. Ten tries at rolling a die, a simple die. And we want to uh, uh, get. Five threes. So five out of that ten times, I'm going to get threes. 
Actually, let's make it even easier. Let's say what's the probability that all 10 <coughs> are 3. So all 10 times that you roll the die, you get a 3 every time. Right? So calculate that probability. Don't, don't use the formula. Just do what you know to do. Oh. Just do what you know to do. You just use your previous experience. Well, I know what the probability of getting a 3 is. I know I want to get a 3 10 times in a row. I know what I do when I get this, then this, then this, then this, then this, then this 10 times in a row. It's even. I don't expect you to have any idea what that formula means. Even if you could plug the numbers in the right places, I'd rather you just start from what you know right now. So I'm going to take this. Always possible. We want to see overall what's the probability success. of getting exactly one. Yeah, success. Exactly one success. Okay. So let's talk about k equals one. That means one success, as we've described success, getting a three. Um, here's one way we can do it, and this is what a lot of you came up with. One sixth, right? We want to get one three, and then the rest not three. So we'll do one sixth. Then we'll do five sixths, then we'll do five sixths, and so on, all the way down, and do five sixths. Okay, so if I multiply all this together, I really have one sixth times five sixths to the ninth, right? Nine five sixths multiplied together. That's great, that's perfect. But there's more because what I've written down here is specifically the first roll was a three. And the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth were all not threes. That's not the only way I could get one three, right? And there, what's another way that I could get one three? The second roll is a three. So here's another possibility. So this can happen, or this can happen. All the way down the line. So would that be multiplied by ten because? Once you can, there's 10 different ways uh, you can do it. So you're jumping all the way to the end where if we just move this 160 success, right, on down the line, it can take all of 10 of those positions. So there's 10 different ways, and the probability of each is exactly the same because there's one one sixth probability, yeah. and nine of the, of the rest are all five six probabilities. So every one of these will be one sixth times five six to the ninth. The next one we do, if we move the 1 6 to the third position, still 1 6 times 5 6 to the ninth. And there are 10 different ways that we can get 1 6, or sorry, 1 3, right? A uh, single 3 in, the, in, in 10 rolls. In the first position, the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, ten. That's really easy to count, right? I just put the one thing, the one success that I want in any of the 10 positions. So there's our. 10 times 1 sixth times 5 sixths to the ninth. Now it's starting to look a little bit like that formula that we looked at the beginning of class. We got something times a probability to the first power times a probability to the ninth power. This one and this one, this one and this nine add up to 10. Right? They, they represent all 10 things that can happen. So 10 would be the combination. Right? 10 is, is the result of that combination. Or, well, let's look at let's look, let's look at two successes, and, and I think that'll make more sense. So, actually, let's take this and uh, let's get rid of all this. Let's talk about our next. K is 2. So we've done K is 10. That was easy. All 10 positions are the same. Just take it to the 10th power. We do uh, 10 failures, right? Zero successes. So, did I put the. Yeah, K is 0. I want to make sure I wrote that down right. Now we're going to do uh, 
Uh, we did k is 1, that's pretty easy. We could put that one success anywhere we want. But now, k is 2. So here's one possibility. 1 6 times 1 6 times 5 6 times 5 6 times 5 6. All the way down to the last 5 6. We got two successes, right? Two 1 6 probabilities that we'll multiply together. Agreed? That'd just be 1 6 times 1 6, or 1 6 squared. We'll multiply that by 5 6 how many times? The rest of the eight times. <coughs> right. There's one possibility. Tell me another possibility. Where else could those successes happen? Two and three. Uh, two and yeah, two and three would work. Sure. Two and three would work. So first we'll fail, then we'll succeed, then we'll succeed, and then we'll fail the rest of the time. Well, what's the probability of that happening? So now if we can figure out how many ways there are to have two out of the ten rolls be a three, then we'll have it. Okay. So ten combination two right. times one six squared times nine six times eight. How many ways can these two successes fall within those ten places? Or if you if you think about it like this, there's a first place, a second, a third, a fourth, a fifth, a sixth, a seventh, an eighth, and a tenth. Okay. So I want those two successes to land somewhere in those ten. So basically I want to choose, it doesn't matter which order, four, six, six, four, those aren't different things, right? If I roll one in the fourth, and one in the sixth, and one in the sixth, and one in the fourth, that doesn't matter. <coughs> so out of those ten possible uh, trials, I want two of them to be successes. So how many ways do I count those two out of ten things? We've done that before, right? We pick combinations of those. I want to pick all the different combinations of these ten numbers to let be successes. So like tendency two. Tendency two. So the number of ways that I can have two out of ten successes is the same as the number of ways I can have uh, two out of ten people or two out of ten um, cars or, or cards or rocks or balls in a bag or anything like that. If I want to take two of ten things in a way that order doesn't matter, and it doesn't matter which order they come in, that's 10 C2. And every one of them has the exact same probability. So instead of having to add this up all these times, I know how many times, how many ways it can happen. I'll just take 10 C2. 10 C2 is pretty big. 45. 45. That's pretty big. Not not too big. 10 P2 would be really big, right? Yeah. Well, a lot bigger. Um, yeah, yeah, 45. Uh, 10 C2 times the probability, right? All of these things that have the exact same probability, they all have probability one sixth to the second times. Five sixths to the eighth. So this can happen. Right? We can have two successes and eight failures in forty-five different ways. Does that seem believable? Yeah. Like if you try to, like the the way that I would do it to make sure I got all of them is take this one six, the second one, move it all the way down, right? And that and that's all the ways that I can have a success first. Okay, and then I would put it right here, move this all the way down, count all those. Move them down to here, move this one all the way down, move them to here, move this all the way down. On, 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 on. That seems like a lot, seems 45, so, you know, pretty reasonable. Uh, kind of confirms our intuition, 10 C2. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'm going to give you the same scenario, just so that we can stay consistent with, with what we're doing here. Um, I'm going to do this again. All that. Um, <coughs> what's the 
probability that um, we'll get So when I say seven, that number oh, represents the number successes. of successes. Oh, sorry, I thought you were like, changing the success. No, I mean, that makes I'm sense. Sorry. So this gets into what we call random variables, what we call random variables. That would be in a binary experiment, specifically in this scenario, in a binary experiment where I've defined what success is, there's only I can succeed or fail. So this number that is the number of times that I succeed, whatever that success means. Okay. And usually, we'll give it a random variable called capital letter X is this random variable. What I'm really asking you is, so X is um, uh, really bad number of successes. So I'm asking you, what's the probability that X, the random variable, is useful to seven? And X represents the number of times, and more specifically, X represents the number of threes that we get. <coughs> this is all the, the same as what we've been talking about. I want to get seven oh. threes. What's the probability that I get seven threes? All right, that's what we should get. Point zero 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 two four eight, and we'll round up to a one because that's a zero seven. Okay, so uh, short version, we use the probability or the yeah the, the formula to find this probability. We've got the experiment described. We've got n trials. That's ten trials. We've got uh, well, um, I guess seven or three. Seven are successes. So the formula goes like this: ten c seven times the probability of success to the seven, and the probability of a failure to the rest of the times power three. Uh, a bit longer story here, just like explaining why that is. Uh, we start the first way, we get two, three, four, five, six, seven successes. Success, success, success. All of those are successes. And then the last three, fail, fail, fail. And each of these is one sixth, of course. This is five sixths. That specific scenario has a probability of one sixth times itself seven times, times five sixths times itself three times. That's just one of them. Just one of them. Specifically, all of the first seven are successes. All the first seven, I roll a three. But I could move this guy down one. This is going to be a very difficult thing to count one by one like this. But we could, we could at least write a different possibility. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this is a success. Success, 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 success. success. One, two, four, five, six, six. One, too many. Fail. Oh, but I succeed again. And then I fail the last two times. There's another way. The probability of this is exactly the same as before, because there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one sixth probabilities, because we'll multiply together. One, two, three, five, six probabilities that you multiply together. So it just remains to figure out how many ways can you succeed seven out of ten times. And that's ten C seven. Sweet. So you take this ten C seven and you multiply it by this probability, which is the same probability for every specific scenario. Right? Which would be the same as taking this and adding it and adding it. Adding all that many times. That's what multiplication is. Right. Now, let's calculate something else. Something that we're actually more often interested in, and our brains tend to think more towards. If you see the probability of seven, a lot of times you think, what's the probability of at least seven? The probability of at least three? You want to know seven or more. Um, so, how are we going to calculate the probability that we get seven or more? <laughs> we might try and look into it. it turns out no. Um. Seven or so. Four of the. Oh, wait. No. So, anything under seven is not. Is it fail, right? 
is something we're not interested in yet. Okay. We have the probability that we'll get seven or above. It's simpler, but then also more labor intensive than maybe you you want. We want to know what's the probability of getting a seven, right? That is a that is a very distinct, not overlapping thing, right? I can get exactly seven, or I can get exactly eight, but I can't get you know. If I get exactly seven, I don't get exactly eight. So I need the probability that I can get exactly seven, or the probability that I can get exactly eight, or exactly nine, or exactly 10. And what would I do with all those probabilities? Add them, Add them all together. These are all the possibilities, right? So you Zero, one, two, three, ten. four, 10 successes. So that's why you just find the probability that you get So I got the probability of seven already. Yeah, that makes sense. Now. I was just like, trying to figure out how to do that. So we can let's see. We found a few probabilities of, of this scenario um, of all ten successes, of zero successes, of one success, two, seven. Okay. So what we could do is. Um, So since we've already found um, seven or maybe two, you just gotta change the k. Yeah, you just change the k and the and you know then the mean exponents are gonna change. One's gonna get bigger, one's gonna get smaller. So to set it up, it's not too difficult. To type in your calculator; it doesn't take too long. Um, what we can do though is we can make a little graph here for zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten all the different possibilities for the number of successes that we can have. All the different possibilities for capital X, the random variable. What's the probability of zero successes? Let's see if we can put um, this in place. Go up to where we did that. Maybe it's big enough to see it. Okay, all 10. Point zero 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 one units. So that's very, very small. So you can put a little skinny bar for zero. That represents the probability that you'll get zero successes. Or no, all so that's all ten successes in there. So I should have put that down at the other end. Tiny, tiny point zero 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 one <coughs> chance that we'll get all ten successes. Then we did zero successes. Um, that was all ten. That was zero. So that was point one six two. That's a little bit better. Um, let's say we go up to point five there. Point one six two. That that's pretty likely. Then we did. Uh, we did one, right? We did one, and that came out to be, we didn't even do it, did we? Anybody do that one for 10? For, uh, not 10, but for uh, one success? It was 10 times 1 sixth times 5 sixths to the ninth. Seven. That came out to what? Point zero 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 two four one. So 
just a little bit bigger than the probability that you'll get all 10, but not very likely. So if we were to go through and find for 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, and 9, and we put graphs there where we have the probability distribution, we found the distribution of, of all 100% and where all that 100% lies for each of these different numbers of successes. So, but for now, let's, let's just find 8, 9, we already have 10, we have 7, and we have 10. Let's find 8 and 9, and then we'll add all the probabilities together. Let's see what the probability we get at least 7. That's nine, nine like threes, six which is a very zeros. likely. Uh, six zeros. I think this one has seven zeros for ten. Oh, it's like six zeros. So this is what was this point zero 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 three? One. One. Eight. Six. Okay, and then this one. So what's the probability we get at least seven? What are we going to do to find out that fifth? Right. Just add those four together, these four probabilities. Bigger than any one of them. Yeah. I'm just not going to bet on that. That's not a good chance. So what do we get? Probability that x is at least 7. What did you get? Not very good. 3 zeros? Okay. 3 zeros, right? 3 zeros. 3 zeros. 2, 6, 8. So adding this on to this did not increase it by all that much. That's not surprising. Getting an 8, 9, or 10, uh, 7 out of 10 rolls is not likely. Okay, let's, let's kind of collect some data and then we'll conduct an experiment on it. Um, how many of us here have a smartphone? Here's mine. Not smart. Get yours. Who wants it? not smart. Um, 
So let's raise our hands again. How many of you have a smartphone? Own a smartphone, you don't have to have it on you. Okay, so five out of the, how many are in? Nine. Eight. Eight. Including me. Oh, nine. Nine, nine. including me. Yeah. Can we just count five? Yep. Five out of nine. Okay, some really rough data, right? We, need to, we should really count more people, but we don't have more people. So five out of nine people have smartphones. Okay, so a little bit more likely than not. Some person that you ask, do you own a smartphone? It's a little more likely that they'll say yes than no, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, let's give a decimal to that. Let's not forget. It. Let's not give a decimal. Let's go five nine. Let's say it says five ninths probability that a random person. Let, like we're going to extrapolate this out, right? We're going to just say, but let, let's expand this out to the rest of the school, the rest of uh, you know Western Montana. Let's say that five out of nine. We're going to go out and, well, I wonder how likely is it that you go out and ask a bunch of people and, you know, a certain number of them don't have a cell phone? <coughs> a smartphone or a cell phone? Smart, smartphone. Smartphone. Did I say cell phone? No. Smartphone. Um, so let's say we go out and we ask 100 people. I want to know, what's the probability that... Giving you that, we're going to ask 100 people. Okay. We're going to ask 100 people a yes or no question. That's a binary experience, right? Mm -hmm. Yes or no. Just like before, we roll a three, or we don't roll a three. There's only two out. So 100 people, um, what's the probability? not own a smartphone. We'll use our data. Yeah. Use our data to, to make it to a probability and see what we come up with. Okay, so what's the experiment we're doing? <coughs> Experiment is asking a question. Right? Yeah. You gotta think in terms of one thing happened, I ask a question, a yes or no question. I ask a person, do you own a smartphone? And they say yes or no. Right. Um, so how many trials of this experiment are we running? 100. 100, yeah. So uh, this would be, and, okay. And how many successes do we want? 30 successes. What's the probability of, uh, of so I, I tried to flip this on you. What's the probability of success? Four nights. Four nights. So it can get a little bit weird when the success, which sounds good, is sound is the thing that sounds like you failed, like you failed to find someone who owns a cell phone. Yeah. The success is the no. That's what we define as success. We're looking to find out, you know, about people who don't own cell phones or don't own smartphones. Um, so our success is not having a cell phone for so for a smartphone. So the success probability is four nights. Uh, so that would be what we call P. So then Q would be everything else. What's the probability with Q of not succeeding? Five nights. So we got 100 trials. We're going to find out how many ways there are to get 30 out of those to be uh, our success. So the answer, no, I don't own a smartphone. Uh, the probability of success is four nights. That's going to happen 30 times. So that every time we look at one of these combinations of 30 successes out of 100, there's going to be four nights multiplied by itself 30 times. There's going to be five nights multiplied by itself the rest of the time, which is 70 times. Anybody do that? Feel like they got the right? Point zero zero one one. Rounded. That's rounded. Rounded to one. Yeah. Zero zero one one. 
So 0.11, not 1%. Not very likely. But again, the thing that we're, we're actually interested in and that would take a little while to calculate, the thing we're interested in is uh, more like what are the pro what's the probability that, that 30 or more people say that they don't have so one cell phone? I wonder how likely that is. Yeah, we'd have to go 40, 40, or 30, 31, 32, 35, 36, all the way through 100, right? A little crazy. Not that this is a whole lot better, but we could also say, well, that's all the possibilities. Either zero of them don't own cell phones, or one of them doesn't own a cell phone, or two, or three, or four, or all 100, all the way to 150. So if I want to know about 30 or more, well, I could look at the other stuff that's less, like the, there's fewer of them, like 29 on the, all the way down to zero. Does that make sense? It's 29 all the way down to zero. Find all those and take that away from 100%. And then by taking away all of the zero to 29, I'll figure out what's left in the 30 to 100. That's a complement again. We're talking about the complement. Um, should we do another? Or do you feel like it's homework time? I feel like it's homework time. Most of the time.